there's a, a motion in your body which works really well to give you height and give you depth. But this one here, it's going to give you the height. Then I'm opening up, and so if I hit the ball, it goes up there. A good target depth is when the ball moves down towards the back wall just before the second bounce. So if it hits the back wall and it's going down, that's good length. And then it goes downwards after that. You see the ball just hover through the air. Like it's not powering to its final destination. The ball at this height, I'm gonna hit the wall about here or maybe about there, upwards. So I'm not hitting it flat and I'm not hitting it, definitely not hitting it lower. So I wanna hit it higher than the ball and when I strike it and hit it in an upward direction so it then will float. And so it will work. Get a bit less tough. Here, float. And that's, once again, really good. Gary Peterson here today, we're going to talk about floating the ball to depth. Okay, it's a pretty good thing. Works really well. So instead of using brute force and trying to smash the ball down the wall, like that, to get depth, we're going to float the ball. To float the ball, you need to hit the ball upwards so it goes to quality depth. So I've made sure that goes up. This ball's really cold at the moment. So it's um, not helping me out too much, but you'll see when I hit that line, generally, it will go really good quality depth. Now I see people do both drive all the time, and the guy at the front invariably just gets in there and smashes the life out of the ball as much as he can, thinking he's gonna beat the, his opponent down the back by just hitting it harder. And the guy's just already down the back. <laughs> he's come from there over to here, but it's just not gonna happen. What's gonna happen and what's gonna beat your opponent is keeping the ball on the wall and pitching it to the correct depth. And so you need a system where you can guarantee to get the outcome, and that system is to hit 70% of power. So your rally pace should be 70%. So where you've got 100% is full effort, this is rally pace there, there. So what happens is the outcomes get reasonably neat. Right, so let's talk about the intricacies of how to actually float something deep. What happens is instead of trying to throw your racket towards the front wall, there's a, a motion in your body which works really well to give you height and give you depth. That motion, I'll, just, I'll face the camera for a sec to do this one. That motion, so instead of going around this way, which is not gonna give you height, it's gonna give you power if you like. But this one here, it's gonna give you the height. Then I'm opening up, and so if I hit the ball, it goes up there. So it depends how much I open my body this way as to how high the ball goes. So if I open my body this way. So you see me when I drive, you'll see me, you'll see me go here, and I'll turn back, and that'll make the ball go up. So I go there, trouble here, and out, and it will go up. So what I've done is I've gone early off, my, I'll just keep my weight on my back foot a little bit more, instead of having all my weight on my front foot, which is gonna drive them through the ball. So you can transfer some weight from here back to your back foot, my back foot will open that up, and that'll give me the float depth. So it'll work really well. You get float depth with angle, angle of racket, so you can pitch the ball deep. Okay, so that will work for you. But you can also get strength through your body. And the ball, that's the float depth one perfectly. There, there, it floats just beautifully to target, second bounce back wall. And so you need to understand with target depth, what is good target depth. So good target depth is when the ball moves down towards the back wall just before the second bounce. So if it hits the back wall, and it's going down, that's good length. And then it goes downwards after that. But if it's going here and it's going up towards the back wall, it comes up and it sits back off the back wall and gives options. And you can find yourself in a little bit of trouble sometime. If you've got something with power and racket ability. Okay, so we want to go and use that a little bit whenever we have to, and we want to float the ball to target depth. So if I do a forehand shot from here, straight down the middle, that will float. You see the ball just hover through the air. 
like it's not powering to its final destination. It's actually floating to its destination rather than this, which is just powering to its destination. Ball then goes bang, comes off the back, wall comes out, and it's too easy to get. And so it doesn't work. So you'll be able to throw the ball to target depth really well if you float the ball to target depth. Um, and the answer to it is to just hit upwards. So if I'm striking the ball at this height, I'm going to hit the wall about here or maybe about there, upwards. So I'm not hitting it flat and I'm not hitting it, definitely not hitting it lower. So I want to hit it higher than the ball and when I strike it and hit it in an upward direction so it then will float and so it will work really well. And so we'll go from there and the, the ball will compound against itself and then it will come back out and so it will actually get a bit less tough. Here, float. And that's once again really good target depth. That line is pretty much good target depth, which is where we're at. There, I'll go here, float, just up, just upwards, just up. So it's not up much. Whoops. We go, just upwards. Okay, so this is really poignant when you start to look at balls which are a little bit higher when you strike them. So when the ball is up here, it's a bit higher when I strike it here. I've still got to hit it just flat. So it's easier when it's down here, you can hit it upwards and it's fine. But when it's here, you just got to resist the temptation to hit it downwards and hit it just upwards so it starts to float to target depth. And you can put a lot of power into it and everything as well. So they're not slow hits, they're pretty neat. So floating, I can't emphasize enough just the difference it makes. If you do routine based training with a target process, a target requirement as much as possible, um, you'll learn really quick that if you do not float the ball to target, you'll be opened up big time for people getting on the ball and attacking shots really well, even within routines, not necessarily even within um, a game, but within routines you'll find it really difficult simply because your target depth is not good enough and your quality is not good enough. So floating the ball will give you the target depth and will give you the quality. You float volleys. The ball is here. I just floated that volley to depth. I didn't smash it to depth. I floated it to depth. So when the ball comes there, I'm hitting it high. I hit it just upwards and it still went to depth because I floated the ball to depth. I didn't pound the life out of it and smash it downwards and try and get it there as fast as I could. I've controlled the ball here, there, even that. That's just controlling the ball by floating it to depth. There's so much in floating it to depth and getting targets that it's just, it's almost like a cornerstone of being a good squash player. That's how important this stuff is. It's seriously, seriously important. Really, really important. And um, I'll just show you this exercise that I do. I have to move the camera for this one. Okay, so here's our exercise. It's really, really quite good. So it's not as easy as it looks. You really gotta lift the ball up. I'm trying to go to the back of the service box. And it's just tough. Two forehands, two backhands. One, one down the wall, one cross court. Down the wall, this one here is up. That's up, sorry, go wrong. Up, up. So I'm hitting it flat, no matter what height I'll take it. Lift the ball up, that's a tough one. That's a tough one, that's a tough one. Right, so it goes pretty well. It's such a good exercise. And you learn about how much of this you have to put in to get a quality depth all the time. Depth is just so important, it's phenomenal. When you learn depth, you learn to become a good player. It's that simple.